So within Oracle, it's possible to re-execute the same SQL statement and share the SQL statement by the use of what we would call bind variables. Now, if we take things to use bind variables, you'll notice that we jump the, C the performance of the application another order of magnitude to over 30,000 transactions a second. Now, bearing in mind we came from 300 transactions a second, this is a big gain. We have increased the performance. We haven't changed the hardware. We haven't changed the licensing model. The only thing we've changed is how the application logic is sending down the code. Okay, so by use of bind variables and being able to reuse each other's cursors and execution plans, we have jumped another order of magnitude. Other things to note when doing these sort of things is that we've actually changed um, the application to put little markers, which is what we would call bind variables in the SQL statement. As a result, we can reuse the SQL statement or share the SQL statement. And in many cases, we deal with people saying, well, we don't actually think it's that important to use bind variables or it's slowing down my programmer productivity. Well, you may be slowing down your programmer productivity, and that's because you're having to go to retrofit an application that wasn't structured correctly from the beginning. And the programmer wasn't told to use bind variables or was never even educated in the use of them. And now you were trying to defend the undefendable and using silly arguments. One of the other issues is if you use a screen scraping application and don't use bind variables, you leave yourself way open for security implications. What happens if somebody typed into those fields inside the screen scraping application the right series of escape sequences commas, escapes, such that they could embed the SQL clause or one equals one. If they could do that, that means potentially this web form could return all rows in the table that you're wanting to look at. You've now led yourself open to what we would call SQL injection attacks. And so one of the safest ways to write on when you're doing a web facing or a customer facing or a online application to protect yourself from security implications is to write it using bind variables from the beginning. Again, this is something that the architects or the development managers need to specify before the programmers start writing code. This cannot be emphasized enough because to retrofit it is always difficult, it's embarrassing, and is best avoided altogether. Just do it right from the beginning. So let's go back and start changing the application to start using bind variables. And I have a tab here, and we'll just basically apply that. And you will notice a dramatic change in the performance profile of the application. Now, you'll notice we, as we transition the cursor model, there's a dip in performance, and that's normal. So nothing to worry about that. But you can now see, now that we're using shared SQL and bind variables, in every metric that we have, everything is improving. You can see we're now meeting our performance target as we're now up over 30,000 SQL statements per second. The response time is now so rapid, it's barely forming a graph. In fact, you can see it's two milliseconds. And remember, we were at about 230 milliseconds when we started, when we were logging on and off. If you actually look at the database profile, we're running with no contention, next to no contention at all down here. It's all running on the CPU. And because we're actually not going through the process of reparsing the SQL statements and creating cursors, we've saved some code paths, so we're actually doing less code path and still the code path, the majority of it is in user space. But the big gain is to be seen in the real world metric, which is the response time and the throughput.